In this video, we're going to write a Python program to simulate the Montreal problem. So the Montreal problem is something I've always found very interesting. It's a brain teaser that tricks many people, including me, and including a famous mathematician, and including many people with advanced degrees. Now, as an undergraduate student, I actually had to write a program to really understand what was happening in the Montreal problem. And that's really what I want to do in this video. So the problem is based off the American game show, Let's Make a Deal, and it's named after its host, Monty Hall. Now on this game show, players would be given three doors, and the player would have the option of choosing one of those doors. Now behind two doors would be a goat, and behind one door would be a car. And the player obviously wants to choose the door which has a car to win the car. Now after the player picks a door, the host will open one door to reveal a goat behind it. The player is then given the opportunity to switch doors to the other available door that they have not picked. It turns out that if the player switches doors, they have a 2 in 3 chance of winning. If the player sticks with their current door, they only have a 1 in 3 chance of winning. Now this is the part that messes with many people, because it feels like each door should have a 1 in 3 chance. Let's write a Python program to understand why this is the case that switching doors gives the player a 2 in 3 chance of winning. So we'll import the random module because we're going to use randomization. We'll create a list called doors to represent our three doors. We'll have doors is equal to, and we'll have the strings goat, goat, and car to represent our outcomes. And the indexes of this list are going to represent doors. And the string that's at each index is going to represent the result of opening that door. Then we'll create a variable called attempts and we'll set it equal to 10 initially, where attempts is going to be the number of times that we attempt each strategy. We'll keep track of how many times we win the car with each strategy using the variable wins. So we'll have wins is equal to zero. And then we'll first create a loop to carry out the first strategy of just picking a door and sticking with it attempts number of times. So we'll have 4i in range 0 to attempts. So this loop is going to run attempts number of times. And in this loop, we're going to implement the strategy of just picking a door and sticking with it. Now we'll shuffle the items inside the doors list to represent the rearranging of the items behind the doors at random. So we'll have random.shuffle and call the shuffle function of the random module and we'll pass it doors. And this is going to randomly rearrange the items of that list. We can see that if we open doors, we could have print doors here. And if we save the program and give it a try, we'll see here we get this random rearrangement of these items in the list. Then we could randomly pick an index in this list. So this list has the indexes 0, 1, and 2. So we'll randomly pick a integer in that range. We'll use the randint function of the random module to do that. We'll have pick is equal to random dot randint zero two. So randint is going to return a random integer in the range of zero to two. So either zero, one, or two, and we'll store that into pick. Now at this point, the host is going to open one of the two doors that the player has not picked, and that door has to have a goat behind it. So let's first determine which doors actually have a goat. What we'll do is loop through our doors list, and if that index does store a goat, then we'll add the index to a list of goat doors indexes. So we'll create a goat doors list, which is initially empty. And this list is going to store the indexes of our doors list, which do store goat. We'll loop through the doors list indexes with a for loop. We'll have 4j in range 0 to 3. So each time this loop body executes, j is going to go from 0 to 1 to 2, the indexes of our doors list. And we'll check to see if at that index j, there is a goat. If there is, we're going to add that index to our goat doors list. So we'll have goat doors dot append j. So at this point, goat doors is going to contain 
the indexes of our doors list which store a goat. And we could check that. Here we could output doors, and then we could also output goat doors. So we'll have goat doors here. And if we save this and try it out, then we can see that it works because here we have goats at the indexes zero and two, and our goat doors list does have zero and two. And here we have goats at the indexes one and two, and our goat doors list does have one and two. Now we're going to use these indexes we've stored in goat doors to help decide which door to open as the host. Because for example, if the player did pick this door index here, zero, then the host must open this door here, index two. Because the host can't open the door the player picked, the host can't open the door with the car behind it. So the only option left is this one here. So what we'll do is check to see if the player picked a door with a goat behind it, because if they did, the host is going to have to open the other door with a goat behind it. We'll call these our goat doors. And basically the logic is like this. If the player picked, let's say the first goat door, whatever it is, then the host is going to have to open the second goat door. If the player picked the second goat door, whatever it is, then the host is going to have to open the first goat door. So let's implement that. Down here we'll have if the player picked what we'll say is the first goat door stored at the index zero of our goat doors list, then the host is going to open the other goat door stored at the second index of our goat doors list. So we'll have host opens this other goat door. So goat doors at the index one. Otherwise, we have the possibility that the player picked the second goat door. So otherwise, the player may have picked what is at goat doors at the index one. So the player picked this index here, stored at the second index of goat doors. And then in that case, we need to have the host open that first goat door, stored at the first index of goat doors. So we'll have host opens, is equal to goat doors at the first index zero. Now the other possibility is that the player picked the door with a car. So if the player picked this index here with a car, then in that case, the host can open up either of the two goat doors. So we could just randomly choose one of these indexes stored in goat doors. And there's a choice function of the random module which will randomly return one of those values stored in the goat doors list. So we'll do that. We'll have here otherwise with an else case, host opens is going to be equal to random dot choice goat doors. And what this function will do is randomly return one of these indexes, which is stored in our goat doors list. So for example, in this situation here where we have a car behind the first door and then two goats behind the remaining doors, if the player did pick this first door here with the car behind it, then this else case is going to execute and we'll have the host open one of these two remaining doors that have a goat behind it. Now we're modeling the situation where the player is just going to stick with their choice. So here, we'll just check to see if the door that the player picked has a car behind it. And if it does, then we'll increase the number of wins by one. So we'll have here, if doors at the index pick is equal to the car, then we'll increase wins by one because the player has another win. Then we'll divide the number of wins by the number of attempts to get the percentage of times the player wins with the strategy. So we'll have wins divided by attempts, and then we'll multiply the result by 100. And we'll put that. And let's increase the number of attempts. Up here, we'll now have, let's say 100,000 attempts. And if we save this and give it a try, we get a name error here, let's just fix that. We'll go down here and we'll change it to wins and then save it and try again. And now we get 33.579. We'll try it again. 33.2399 and so on. 
So we can see the player is winning about 33% of the time with that strategy. And that is what we would expect because the player picks one of three doors at random and one of those three doors is going to have the car behind it. So winning a third of the time makes sense. Now, what if the player does switch doors? Let's copy and paste all of this and implement that strategy. We'll copy all this and we're going to reset wins to zero. And then down here, we'll paste it. Now, after the host opens a door, then the player is going to open the other door. So the player is not going to open the door that they initially picked, and they're not going to open the door that the host already opened. They're going to open the only remaining door. Let's determine the index of that door. So we have the indexes 0, 1, and 2 for our doors, the indexes of our doors list. We'll store these into a list that we'll call all doors. Then we'll determine the index of the door to open by process of elimination. So it's not going to be the door that the player initially picked. So we'll remove that index from the list using the list remove method. We'll have all doors dot remove pick. So we're going to remove that index from the list. Then we'll also remove the index of the door that the host opened. So we'll have all doors dot remove host opens. So the only remaining door index in this list is going to be the one that the player opens. We'll store that into a variable called switch pick. We'll have switch pick is equal to all doors at the index zero, the only remaining item in that list. Then we'll open up that door. So we'll have if doors at the index switch pick is equal to the car, then the player has won with their new pick and will increment wins. And again, we'll calculate the win percentage. So we'll save this and try it out. And here we get 66.876 with this new strategy. Let's try it again. 66.513. So now with this strategy of always switching to the other door after the host reveals a goat behind one door, we're winning about 66% of the time, which is what we said would happen. So why is this? This is where I think seeing the code helps us to understand why this is the case. So up here, we make the initial pick. And there's going to be a one in three chance of picking any of the doors. So there's a one in three chance the player picks the door with the first goat behind it. There's a one in three chance the player picks the door with the other goat behind it. And there's a one in three chance the player picks the door with the car behind it. And that's why it makes sense that if the player doesn't switch their pick, they're going to have a one in three chance of winning the car. Now, when the host opens a door, they're actually revealing information. And in two thirds of cases, that information will allow the player to then make the correct door selection. And we can see that here in the code. So pick is either going to be set to the door with the first goat, the door with the second goat, or the door with the car. And we can see those three possibilities and how they're going to be handled with this if, else if, else statement. Now, if the player picks the door with the first goat, then the host is going to open the door with the other goat. And if those two possibilities are removed, then the only remaining possibility is going to be the door with the car. Now, in a similar way, if the player picks the door with the other goat, the host is going to open the door with the first goat. And again, when those two possibilities are removed, the only remaining door is going to be the door with the car. So in these two cases here, which are going to occur two thirds or 66% of the time, the player is going to win the car. Now, if the player does pick the door with the car, then in that case, when they switch, they are going to lose. Because in that case, the host is going to open one of the doors with a goat. And when the player switches from their pick, which has a car to the only remaining door, that's going to be a door with a goat behind it. So one third of the time, the player is going to lose. Now, again, this is why I feel like seeing the code can help us to better understand this problem because the player initially has a one in three chance of picking any of the doors. Then in this if, else if, else statement, we can see the impact of the host opening a door and revealing information. 
because if the player picked a door with a goat behind it, which is going to happen two thirds or 66% of the time, the host is going to open the other door with a goat behind it. And that only remaining door for the player to switch to is going to be the door with the car. So that's why the player is going to win 66% of the time with this strategy. It's only in the one third of cases when the player initially picks the door with the car behind it, that the player is then going to switch doors to a door with a goat behind it. And we can see this illustrated in the Wikipedia article. So in this article here, they have this illustration which shows what I'm talking about here, where if the player picks a door with a goat and then the host reveals the other door with the goat and the player switches, they're going to get the door with the car. And then if the player picks the other door with a goat and then the host opens the second door with a goat behind it, then the player is going to pick the door with the car when they switch and they'll win again. So in these two cases here, or 66% of cases, the player wins. It's only when the player picks the door which has a car behind it and then they switch where they're going to lose. So that's how it works. Now, of course, we can get into more detailed mathematical descriptions of what's going on here. The aim of this video was to give you a better understanding by looking at the code. So this has been a simulation of the Monty Hall problem in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.